This podcast is intended for mature audiences. It features mature themes, violence, loud sounds, and strong language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello? Hello? Excuse me? Uh, hi? Oh, hey. Are we expecting you? Uh, I was told this was the meeting place for the Dark Tome Tours. Oh, that thing with Digby? Is that today? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, wait. Over there. Sure, okay, thanks. Time travel is real. I am now in 1981. Don't believe it. Hold on to that feeling. Hi. Is this where they do the tours? Yes, hon. Over there. <gasps> Come on, oh, Mom. My gosh, I'm so excited. Do you think he'll be here? Mom, she's not listening. Huh? Me? Uh, sorry. Who? The clown. Oh, I am so excited. <sighs> the clown? What are you talking about? It's his radio station! It's... what? (sighs) She doesn't know, Mom. Oh, you don't? Uh, No. Uh, Billy the Clown? Oh! Uh, that guy from the 80s? Those kids commercials? That's the one! He's still alive? He owns the radio station. I've got this plushie. I'm hoping he'll sign it. You're hoping Billy the Clown is going to waltz out of that back room and sign your plushie? Oh, yes. He does things like that. Yeah, sometimes. You do realize we're in Maine, right? Yes. And you're excited to see a clown? So excited! (laughs) Yeah. Haven't you ever read Stephen King? Who? Oh, shit. I'm going to wait up front. Miss, I said you could wait over there. I, I'm waiting here to see if Billy comes out. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. You've got cool hair. Huh? Me? My mom wouldn't let me dye it like that. I really wanted to. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I guess when you're my age, you stop giving a fuck what other people think. Oh, sorry, language. It's not like I haven't heard it. Fuck the fucking fuck. <laughs> hey. Here you go. What's this? Coupon for the hair dye. Don't tell your mom, just do it. Oh, cool, thanks. So you're what, uh, in high school? A junior, yeah. I don't suppose you heard about the girl who went missing, uh, Cassie Pinkham? Yeah, what about her? Is everything they say about her true? All the weird stuff with the magic? It wasn't weird, it was real. Yeah? How do you know? She made this girl's hair fall out. How? With magic, duh. Oh, shit. You, you mean like in the craft? The what? Never mind. So, you were saying? Kids at school don't like to talk about this stuff. It freaks them out. But it got weirder from there. You'd wake up, and the stores downtown would have different names. The ice cream shop would have different flavors. And your favorite band would be making different kinds of music. Wow. And that's not even the craziest part. Oh, yeah? Yeah, actually... How now, intrepid occult adventurers! Who's ready to embark on a journey, exploring the unknowable, digging into the secrets best left unsolved, uncovering the insolvent riddle that is the Dark Tome? Oh yeah, I'm gonna get my money's worth. Yeah? Tell CNBC I'm keeping their microphone, and next time, maybe screen them better. I said we we're talking about my new album, not any more goddamn clown business. <gasps> oh, hey, everybody. Uh, uh, nothing like a burger from Happy Clown. Billy, Billy will make you smile, even don't if you don't know how. how. Smile, smile, smile for Wonder, Wonder Burger. Wow! wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god, oh my god, Billy, I'm such a fan. 
Look, I'm sorry. I'm not really in the clown business anymore. Please, it would make me so happy. Oh my God, you, you don't know what your work means to me. Just, <laughs> just right here. All right. Just this time. <laughs> and remember, whatever you do, don't trust Digby. He's just blowing smoke up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You want to know who really planted the dark tome here? <gasps> Aliens! Toodles! What, what just happened? I think my mom wet her pants. Wait till she sees your hair. Realm Presents, a Degas Media Production. Undertow, A Dark Tome Story, Episode 3. Everyone... This here is Madge, the other half of the Dark Tome Tours. When they say better half, they really mean it. We also have a special guest today. Uh, Sonia, is it, from the Boston Circle? Not here in an official capacity, just along for the ride. (laughs) Well, we're honored you're gracing our little tour. Now, as I was saying, Madge keeps the wheels on the bus, so to speak. Such as reminding you we're now passing Main Street. Uh, uh, uh... Uh, right. Uh, uh, here we are on Main Street, which has twice been decimated by horrific fires. Once in the summer of 1984 and again in 2016. The fire of 1984. I was just a boy then, but my dad took me down here to see it. That fire took eight towns' fire departments to put to rest. And let me tell you, there were shapes in that blaze. Creatures from nightmares begging to get out. I bet a $20 bill you can't find a fireman who worked that night who'll tell you what they saw. I've seen him do it too. Drop by off the wagon some Thursday night and he'll do the magic trick. Pull out 20 bucks in front of a bunch of drunks and see no one take it. (laughs) (laughs) In 2016, there was another fire suspiciously like the one in 84, only on the opposite side of the block. That pile of rubble used to be the site of Gussie's rare books, right next door to where I had a comic book shop with some not-so-rare books, (laughs) but equally susceptible to the power of fire. Sadly, all of Main Street remains susceptible to the economic recession, hence the lack of redevelopment, at least in this part of town. Now, Both fires, as well as a fire back in 1979 and the hospital fire of 2018, were linked directly to the story of the Dark Tome. Who here knows the history of the Dark Tome? Oh, oh, me. Over here. No, 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 no. Come on here. Me, 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 me. Uh, you don't, miss? Please don't call on me. (laughs) Okay. Anyone care to enlighten her? Oh, it's the worst of books. A thing demons brought to Earth. It's set on destroying the universe. Yeah, that's what some people think. Any other ideas? It was kind of like the Bible, only for magic. Wasn't meant to be interfered with by regular people, though. Yeah, that's closer to what the records tell us. They tell us that the Dark Tome is a chaos agent. That it's sort of an agent of dark matter. The harder you try to understand it, to solve it, as it were, the more screwed up your mind gets. The further you are from truth. Obsessing over the dark tome leads to disastrous conclusions, like lighting your building on fire and burning a town block to the ground. At least that's the story we're led to believe about Wilbur Gussie. Is there anyone here who really believes that fire was started by an ashtray with hot ashes still in it? (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Truth is, we don't know why the fire started, but it seems mighty peculiar that it coincides with Wilbur Gussie's disappearance, the brief reappearance of Cassie Pinkham, and the chain of events that leads to Simpson Falls' latest renaissance. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss, you don't believe me still? You have a better theory? I wasn't going to say anything. No, 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 I want to hear. Well, that's a good story, but it could still be any number of other things. Faulty wiring, a coffee pot left on too long. Tell her about the photos. What photos? Digby's got a couple. Here. So this is what the place used to look like, huh? Used to? Nah, it still does. What? Look at the timestamp on those. Oh, March of last year. Six months after the place burned to the ground. But that's impossible. Of course it isn't. Everything is possible. Everything is. Sorry, did I mistakenly get on a New Age guru expedition? (laughs) No, it's called the Mandela Effect. Like the year with the fish fingers. Gary, the fish fingers don't (laughs) enter into it. Excuse me? For six weeks in 1989, every last fish caught in that river contained at least one human finger. Gary, that didn't happen. I grilled one of them up myself that year. Tasted all right. Ooh. Gary, he told you to park it. I hate urban legends. Oh, really? Don't look at me like that. I take this work seriously. I investigate real, verifiable phenomena. Some people mix it up with crazy rumors and ruin it for those who take it seriously. So you believe in this uh, Mandela effect? I do. How are we to say there aren't many, if not infinite, alternate worlds? It explains so many things. The idea of past lives, deja vu, even UFOs. Uh Uh-huh. I think the young lady might need a definition, huh? Oh, right. So... The Mandela Effect says there are clues left behind that prove the existence of these infinite worlds, major world events people remember differently, or minor cultural phenomenon, photos taken of things that clearly could not have been. And fish fingers. Shut up, Gary. Keep that photo. It's a copy anyways. Take a close look at it. Tell me if it's fake. If you do, I'll give you $100. I'm a journalist. I can't take gifts. Keep it anyways. Next stop is the site of the old hospital, the event that revealed to the world the Dark Tome's presence in this town. Hey, ma'am. Looks like you got something you're dying to say. The official reports say that it started with the failed valve of an oxygen tank, which ignited due to the presence of an illegal lighter in the hospital and got out of control because of a freak cascading failure of a series of fire suppression systems. I get the feeling you guys don't believe those reports. Well, we believe there was a lighter. That's right. Could you tell me your version of events? That fire was caused by the Dark Tome. Only explanation. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Care to elaborate? Occam's razor. The simplest theory is the correct one. Sorry, I I don't see how a theory that involves the supernatural is the simplest one. I have a bachelor's in science. I believe in the scientific method. Uh Uh-huh. Your degree is in astronomy, Digby. So? The scientific method works for supernatural phenomena as soon as you are willing to believe that science has limited means for understanding stimuli that are beyond humanity's primitive senses. Using this method, we can examine the large body of evidence that suggests the dark tome was present in this town over the last 30 years, attracting strange events to this humble little hamlet. Evidence like what? You listen to the podcast yet? Consider the research, not the medium. The podcast talks about our hometown enigma, Mr. Gussie, who wrote one of the most influential essays about the history of the occult artifact, as well as writer Mary Larson, niece to the late Joe Ricci, last known possessor of the Dark Tome. The podcast paints a clear picture about how Ricci got the Dark Tome from the archives at Arkham University here to Simpson Falls, before his horrific death on the Pasadumkeg River Bridge after he saw an apparition. Is that the bridge into town? One and the same. It has a history of disappearing people? Over 24 to our count. Including Jackie Thompson. Not proven, Gary. What else could it be? Girl didn't OD. It was the monster. Monster? That one falls somewhere between lore and local legend. 
the disappearances are documented. The creature in the mist? Those reports are unreliable. And here we are at the new hospital. Looks like a shining empire of mirror glass, doesn't it? What are the papers saying? The future of Simpson Falls? The vision to revive one dying mill town? The remarkable new frontier of high-end medicine? And maybe that's all true. But what I really want to know is, what goes on behind those glass walls? What would a multinational corporation with shadowy operations and limitless funds want to do with this little town? Hey, can we hang on here for a moment? I need to pick up my partner. Your partner's a patient here? He's digging into it for our story. Uh, they, they don't love us loitering on the sidewalk. I'll just be a minute. Go on. We'll wait. I hope you'll consider Dr. Leopold's offer carefully. I will. And remember, this is completely confidential and proprietary. Any lapse of judgment on your part could have severe consequences. You did agree to grant me an interview. I think you'll remember which parts were off the record. Thank you for visiting this Malleus Corporation facility. Tony? Jesus. What the hell did you do to him? Good day to you, ma'am. Hey! Hey, open up! What the hell? I... Tony, what is going on? Nothing. I'm fine. You don't look fine. What happened in there? Can't talk about it. But you are going to talk about it, right? For the paper? For your goddamn story we were sent to Maine to cover? Sure. Let me look at you. Are you high? No. Then why are you not you? I'm me. I'm fine. I... I just learned something about Melissa. Your sister? The one who drowned? That's where it gets complicated. It's tragic, but not complicated, Tony. I need a drink. I thought you quit drinking. A smoke, then. Okay, how about we get on that bus? hmm? Okay. Hey, welcome aboard. He doesn't get a refund for missing the first half. Wouldn't dream of it. Hey, everyone, this is Tony. Hey. Take a seat, Tony. All right. Well, we have a final stop. I I, I gotta ask, what did you find in there? Can't talk about it. Will it be in the paper? Maybe. (sighs) The enigma persists. Now, this last stop is really special. We have an eyewitness to the hospital explosion who is kind enough to spend a little bit of time talking to us about what she experienced in the fire last year. She was scheduled to work that day, but due to a computer mix-up, she ended up coming in an hour late, an action which saved her life and resulted in her witnessing horrific and unexplainable things. Things which no journalist has ever reported on. Fantastic. Okay, everyone, take a minute to stretch your feet. We're getting off the bus. In a strange twist of fate, this is the same condominium complex where Cassie Pinkham's mother stayed prior to her tragic death in the hospital explosion. Our friend Nurse Cody lives over here. I'm just going to text her real quick. You learn anything interesting on this tour yet? This town seems to be prone to bursting into flame, also drownings. You think there's anything to this dark tome? I think it's the best thing that happened to this guy's career. Funny how the internet works, isn't it? A podcast strings together a series of random events with a conspiracy theory, and suddenly this town has a whole new cottage industry. Funny thing, though. Yeah? He gave me this photo of the downtown, supposedly taken months after it burned. Huh. He says it's proof there are multiple worlds. Sort of like that photo. What? I have a photo of it. Right here. Right here. Right here. Aren't we a cute gum? Sonia? Sorry, a ghost walked over my grave. Ricky and his... Never mind. Some more people want to hear about the scariest things I ever saw in my life. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Hi, Gail. Thanks for spending some time with us today. So, 
All of you read about what happened to Simpson Falls General Hospital on October 24th, 2018, right? Yeah. You're skeptical, as you should be, about the official story that the fire suppression system was faulty, that fire doors failed to close, that a propane tank for the generator system was leaking into the building via a poorly soldered joint. You all know what really happened. The dark tome caused it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, I can see. Not all of you believe in the dark tome. You still paid for a ticket, though, didn't you? Meaning, some part of you believes. Unless you just thought it'd be fun to come along and roll your eyes at some country bumpkins and their ghost stories. That is 100% not me. Or at least 85. I didn't believe in any of it myself. But seeing is believing. And this is what I saw. I left my house at 3 o'clock that afternoon. Or at least what I thought was 3 o'clock, though it turned out it was actually 4 o'clock. And everything I had that could keep time was off by an hour. When I got to the hospital, things were normal. I was just parking when suddenly things went sideways. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it other than that. I was walking across the street and suddenly things were just a little bit different than they'd been. First thing I noticed was that the paint on the roads were different colors, red on the edges and blue in the middle instead of white and yellow. And the hospital's welcome sign was orange instead of white and black. A, a display of flowers changed colors, too. I stopped dead in my tracks. I thought I was losing my mind, or having a stroke, maybe. And that's when things got really weird. I heard this screeching, like a cat trying to claw its way out of hell. And then the whole damn hospital got a little bit fuzzy, like it both was and wasn't. There were shadow leeches. That's the only way I can think to describe them. And I started crawling out of the sidewalk. The janitor left the hospital to smoke a cigarette and walked right over one, and it just slipped up his pant leg and vanished. Then I started hearing the weird voices chanting over and over, Lieber Tenebris, Lieber Tenebris. I, I was rooted to the spot. I was sure I'd lost my mind. That or I was in terrible peril. And that's when the hospital exploded. When I woke up, there were ambulances and fire trucks everywhere. Things were foggy. An EMT kept talking to me, asking questions, but I screamed. All I could see were the shadow leeches and the one that snuck up that man's leg. I was back in my world, if you believe that. <laughs> A world where the lines on the road are yellow and white, not red and blue. But the hospital was still gone. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> did you ever see him again? Who? The janitor. I uh, didn't get a good enough look at him. So he might still be out there. I don't like to think about that. If you'd like, we could tell you some theories on the leech monster. That's okay. Really? Okay. Say, sir, are you from around here? Me? <laughs> Sorry, Gail, we need to be on our way. You're the little brother, aren't you? <sighs> oh. Poor thing. What? What happened to your sister? It was terrible. Yeah, it was. Um, why are you bringing this up? I was there that night. Helped bring you back to life after they hauled you out of the water. They said it was dumb luck you didn't suffer the same fate as her. What? So we gotta go. Back on the bus, folks. Come on, Tony. I, uh... You saw some strange things that night, didn't you? What do, what do you mean, strange? 
Nurse, we have to go. My friend's not feeling well. Take my number. You want to talk about what happened? Give me a call. Yeah. Okay. Bye. And here we are. WRCK is happy to receive you. Well, thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your tour. Uh, oh, tips are always welcome. <laughs> uh, leave your reviews, and hey, maybe we'll see something about us in the Boston Circle soon. Life is full of infinite possibilities. <laughs> Here's our card if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks. I hope your shit is packed. We're out of here. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? We came, we saw, we were abused, we're gonna get the fuck out before anything crazier happens. Yeah, I hope your intel from the interview was more useful than the tour. We haven't had any whoopie pies yet. You're kidding me. Have you had lunch? No. We still have one thing on our bucket list. Lobster rolls and whoopie pies. And maybe a moxie. Eh? Eh? You know you want it. Mm, only if we hit up a place on the way out of town, you got me? Uh, there's a truck stop called Mona's near the interstate. Classic. Perfect. Let's hope they have Wi-Fi. We have a story to file. You've been listening to Undertow, a dark tome story. Created by Fred Greenhalgh. Presented by Realm. Listen away. Undertow, A Dark Tome Story, is an original audio creation by Fred Greenhalge. Written by Fred Greenhalge and Greg Tulinen. Story by Fred Greenhalge, William DeFries, Barry Dodd, and Greg Tulinen. Based on The Dark Tome, created by Fred Greenhalge and William DeFries. Story consulting by Christopher Reynaga and Marguerite Croft. Sensitivity consulting by Molly and Dana. The Dark Tome Undertow features the talents of Tony Aiden Vaux as Tony Baxter, Stephanie Diaz as Sonia Proud, Jason Grazel as Ricky Hill and X in human form. Colleen A. Madden as Melissa. Anna Carvalho as Maria. Herbie Madden as young Tony. Vivian Madden as young Melissa. Denise Poirier as receptionist, dispatcher, and Roberta. Graham Rowett as Edwin, guard, and drunk. Holly Adams as Tanya and waitress. Kim Gordon as Cynthia. Lisa Stathopoulos as Mainer Mom and Jackie. Lucas Kroll as Kid Ricky. Maya Klosky as Skeptical Teen. Moira Driscoll as Nurse Cody in Psychologist's Office. Nathan Dana Aldrich as Marty. Ned Donovan as Billy the Clown. Paul Belfoyle as Bartender, Local Man and Reporter. Peter Burkrot as Sheriff Warren. P.G. Oakland as Scott, Manager and Town Assessor. Ray Porter as Digby. Wendy Tremont King as Madge. Richard Fish as DJ. Richard McGonagall as Dr. Leopold. Sam Mowry as Leech Monster, Monster X, and Trucker. Tim Sample as Mr. Gussie and William Steele as Psychologist. Additional voices by the cast. The Dark Tome was directed and produced by Fred Greenhalgh. Dialogue editing and sound design by Jason DeWald of Audio Evolutions, audioevolutions.net. Additional sound by Mind's Eye Productions. Final mix by Fred Greenhalgh. Original score by Hubert Campbell. Theme song, Here, My Friend, Your Future, by Frank Schulmeyer. The Dark Tome Undertow was produced from lockdown with distributed performers across continental North America in locations traditionally stewarded by numerous indigenous tribes. The home base of Dagaz Media is in York County, Maine, ancestral land of the Wabanaki Confederacy. The fictionalized location of Simpson Falls is inspired by the Penobscot County region of Maine, the ancestral lands of the Penobscot Nation, the oldest continuous government in the world. Special thanks to Christopher Reynaga and the Point Mystic podcast, pointmystic.org as well as Emily Burnham and Mary San Giovanni. The Dark Tome is a Dagaz Media production. Learn more at dagazmedia.com. That's D-A-G-A-Z media.com. <laughs>